Yes, yeah, this, this is page 145 for stats. Uh, so as you're going through, it says a medical researcher wonders if the percent of people who have surgery from broken bones would be helped by pain relief by acupuncture. At his local hospital, researchers find that 10 patients who have broken legs ask them to participate. Thank you. Um, for broken legs, participate. 40% say acupuncture has helped them. So identify the population. Anyone with broken, uh, with broken bones. Anyone with broken bones. That's our popula our population of interest. Two, our sample happens to be ten patients, and it was the last ten patients. Okay, so this is not random. And it's a small sample, so that's kind of bad. So, and then was it the appropriate sample size? No, only ten. Not random. Not everyone throughout the United States or the world who had broken bones is subjected to the survey. Is this study suffer from bias? Yeah, we have huge bias here. Ten, same location. That's uh, that's not good. That'd be like saying everyone in the mountains with a broken bone goes through this. That doesn't mean anybody else. Describe our per, our is the study suffer from variability? I I would say yes because if I do ten patients here and then ten patients here and then ten patients here and ten patients here, do it. These numbers are going to be very much off. Being our numbers are low, that's bad. Describe the parameter. So our population parameter is kind of unknown because we think it might be at the 40% that we're studying, but we don't know. Identify the sample statistic. The sample statistic is the 40%. Okay, that's given from the sample we got. And then we are attempting to use the sample statistic to estimate the population parameter. Rewrite the idea in this question. So number eight, make it a random sample. Make your sample larger. If your sample is larger, it's going to work out just fine for you. All right, down below, it says three different psychologists study the amount of time people spend on social media sites. Each has different sampling methods. They collect 10 random samples from the results. So we need to calculate the mean for each. So for Dr. Doolittle, if I add them all up, divide by the number there is, would be 129.2. Dr. Seuss, Dr. Seuss, Dr. Doolittle. Uh, we add them all up, divide by the number there is. It's 125.5. I think there's 10 on each. And Dr. Who, his mean would be 124.9. Okay, so let's assume that the average time spent on social minute, media is 125 minutes. Okay, and this is known throughout, like because there's enough data there. So we could see that. So 125 minutes. So who has the most biased sampling method? Well, it's kind of hard to see who would, but I would say that Dr. Who with our, our Dr. Excuse me, Dr. Doolittle because Doolittle has 129.2. It's the furthest away from the 125. Um, which doctor has the highest variable sampling method? They all have the same. They're all the same. They just selected 10 people randomly or 10 sites randomly. And which doctor appeared to have neither bias or too much variability? And I would say Dr. Who. And the reason I say that is at 124.9, that is very close to 125, so that's good to go with. Page 146 says an automotive engineer is testing a new kind of gasoline additive to see if it improves the gas mileage of Ford vehicles. They randomly select 50 Ford vehicles they see at the local shopping mall and ask owners if they can test the product in their vehicles. The mean the mean mileage of these 50 vehicles was 27.3. Okay, so identify the population interest, gas Fords, gas powered Fords. Okay, 13, what was the sample? It was 50 Fords that were local, not random. 
even though they say it's random, it's not really random because it came from the same location. Okay. Was this an appropriate sample size? It's bigger than 30, so yes, it is. But unfortunately, it is low because um, there's a lot of Ford vehicles on the road. And there wasn't a random large enough sample of an entire population. Is this study the left suffer from bias? Well, it's local. It's not going to be the same throughout the United States, so there's different things that could take place there. Is this study suffer from excessive variability? Explain briefly. The sample is random. We did have 50, but it was only local, so those are just some you know bad parts. Describe the population parameter. That's unknown. The sample statistic is 27.3 because that came from our thing, so that's number 18. Number 19, we're attempting to use a statistic. We are attempting to use a sample, or attempting to use a sample statistic estimates the population parameter. Rewrite this idea in the context of this question. Well, the root, the use of doing 50 random samples around the United States is what we really need to focus on. And this was just a random sample from a local site. And then let's see, number. 20 down below it says every name of cherry of creek student was put into a hat 100 or shows that randomly okay so this is good as far as random and if we're only testing cherry creek high school it's it's a plus check mark okay number 21 randomly select 20 freshmen 25 25 and 25 from each class and we do the same thing with the container hats. This seems pretty fair because we have an equal amount per class. But the 25 is low. It's a low sampling number. Number 22, if we were just to ask students that were in the Creek Cafe during fifth period one day this week, that it's not not good to sample that because it's not good to sample that because not everyone's going to go to the cafe not everyone has fifth period off to go to the cafe and then 23 this is always a gotcha question if you have an alphabetized list and you select every 38th name is that a good thing I mean that would be that would be a hundred students that would sample but an alpha list with a given number that you select so every 38th or every 10th or every 5th, that is not a good way to get a random select selection. All right, so we are now going to go to page 61. Page 61, sources of bias. Okay, so if you read through all this, you know, under coverage is the big thing, non-response is something else. So bias number one, under coverage. Did we sample enough? Okay, we wish to know that the percent of the adult population is diabetic. We randomly select 100 people from the phone book in the Denver area and call them. Nine of them are diabetic. This is under coverage bias. Why is that? Well, one, who uses phone books anymore? Two, you don't have to have a listed phone number in the phone book. So there's all kinds of things with that. I mean, though that's a lot of people, there's an awful lot of people that don't have their numbers listed in the phone book. And again, when was the last time anyone has looked at a phone book? Um, why is this under coverage bias? Because the population of interest is adults. Okay, we're not, you know, people, if they are listed in the phone book, you're not talking about the children that are part of the, that statistic or the people who aren't listed in the family. Um, and then what about the people who don't own a phone or don't own a landline? I mean, there's just all these different things that are faced. Non response. So, non response, again, that, we talked about that the other day where, if someone calls you and it says potential spam, are you going to answer it? Okay, it's just taking that. And then we have bias number three, we have response. It says, uh, so response can be influenced by something in a data collection process. We are obtaining a true representative sample of opinions from our population interest. So example one <clears throat> on page 62. The wording of a question can influence a response. Do you favor a small tax increase to pay improved roads or, or the community? 
there's too much in the question. Okay, you could just say, do you favor tax raising taxes? You know, to do on hardworking families to pay for unnecessary road improvements. You know, there's all kinds <coughs> of goofy things you could say. Example two on page 62. An upbeat, fun person wearing a football jersey at a shopping mall asks you to participate in a survey about whether they support building a new football stadium. Okay, the person's already influencing you because they're upbeat, they have a football jersey on, things like that. Example three, the survey is given at the end of the training session about successful business practices, such as such responses are more likely to be positive because people are generally more upbeat at the end of such sessions. So, you know. We've all seen those surveys that are given towards the end. I don't do the surveys at the end. That's just who I am. Um, and bias number four is one we recall. So a lot of times we can't remember if they're asking us questions. You know, how often did you go to a particular restaurant? You might not recall. Okay, so we conduct a survey to see how many car accidents each person had over the past decade. Some people might forget about certain accidents. They might have had a little fender bender, but it could count as an accident. So there's just some things that just take place. So if you read through the rest of 62, page 61 and 62, it talks an awful lot about it. And so if you go to, and just take take an honest look at page 147 and 148. When you get done with that, get done looking at it. We'll go over this on Monday. But if you have extra homework to work on, please feel free to work on it for us, period. And be good to myself, please. Thank you. I can, thank you.